Welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, the coach reviews UND's regular season opening series against Bemidji State and also looks ahead to the NCHC opening series at Colorado College this weekend. Coach, good to be back with you again. What did your team take out of this weekend, each individual, despite his position or his experience? What did they take out of the weekend as a whole after you split with Bemidji State, losing 5-1 here in the Ralph on Friday? and rebounding for a 2-1 win at Bemidji on Saturday. Well, Dan, I think it's just that very distinct difference uh, between uh, energy levels, uh, competitive levels. Uh, you know, the statement of will over skill uh, in most cases yeah. in the game of hockey is very true. Uh, and from Friday night, uh, we certainly were not proud of our performance here. Um, but I was very proud of the maturity that we showed in handling the negativity uh, coming out of Friday night's game that we all felt in our locker room and then channeling that into uh, you know a real performance mm -hmm. uh, and a more uh, team like performance Saturday night in Bemidji. Dave a year ago on your run to the Frozen Four your team developed a chemistry a blue collar bunch lunch pail bunch. Was this weekend anyway a reminder that that may be the blueprint for success again this season. Well, I think, you know, sometimes that kick in the stomach is uh, is always, it's not a great reminder. It's certainly not fun to go through. Um, but for our team, it was a very distinct reminder and a very blunt reminder coming out of Friday night. Uh, I really liked what we got back to on Saturday. I thought we got back into our team MO uh, and we, you know, we played a good hockey game on the road, uh, winning an awful lot of puck battles, winning in a lot of different situations. Uh, and coming out with a good close road victory. One of your themes in practice Thursday that you shared with the players at Center Ice was puck battles. They were certainly real key in both games, were they not? Well, uh, we didn't win very many on Friday. Uh, we won the vast majority on Saturday. So, you know, when it comes right down to it, it's, uh, it's really hard to, uh, uh, to walk away from a performance like we had here in front of nearly 12,000 uh, people. Uh, our great fans, our student section was awesome. Uh, everything was in place. Our performance uh, was lacking. We knew that. Uh, the best thing that we can do uh, is make sure that uh, that lesson learned is, uh, is very distinct uh, and well remembered and now carry forward into the rest of our season. All right, Dave, let's take a look at some highlights. When we come back, we'll recap Friday and Saturday night's games of the opening weekend of the regular season. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back to the show. Dave, let's recap Friday night's regular season opener at the Ralph. As you said, a huge crowd and uh, Bemidji State visiting the Ralph. A uh, couple early signs, I guess, in this first period. One, face-offs, and the other, puck battles along the board that Bemidji started to establish early. Well, uh, face-offs, the, that's the first 50-50 puck battle uh, of, uh, of any hockey game. Now you start, you know, five versus five. Who wants possession of that puck? We didn't win enough of them. Zane McIntyre getting tested early here, stopping Marcus Gerbrandt on a on a couple of stops, and Zane looked sharp early to begin the game. Yeah, he did, and you know we, uh, you know we gave up so many good grade A opportunities against Zane that yeah. uh, we, we kind of left him hung out to dry. That being said, you know as a goaltender and, and a leader on our time on our team, you know we we expect him also to have a better night than he did on Friday night. You killed two Bemidji power plays uh, in the opening 20 minutes. Michael Parks uh, just missing a chance here. And the opening goal of this hockey game will come as a result of one, Bemidji winning a puck battle. And then secondly, a thing that bugged you on Friday night was turning over the puck. Well, we had a lot of turnovers. And even on Michael Parks' uh, replay that you just saw there, instead of driving and shooting and taking that puck to the net, you know, we try a fancy summer toe drag. And that yeah. doesn't work at this time of year. Uh, on the power play here, we lose a puck battle in the offensive zone. We lose a puck battle down low. It's two versus four. Uh, and their guy shoots it in the net. You found yourself on the short end of a lot of odd man rushes in this hockey game as well. A commitment to, to, uh, to defense, a commitment to playing without the puck is what generates offense. And uh, our commitment was, 
you know, was not what uh, what we expected to be. Uh, and as I told the team after the game, uh, you know, we're disappointed in uh, in our performance. Uh, first and foremost, I was disappointed in our preparation, which lands squarely on on, on my shoulders as our uh, as the coach. How'd you read the hockey team coming into this? Open you know, I didn't see it coming, and that's you know, obviously, I was asked that question. Uh, yeah. Had we seen it coming, um, we obviously. Uh, would have uh, done something to alter it. But mm -hmm. just plays like this, rink-wide passes coming out of our zone for turnovers. Uh, we did that several times uh, through the second period. Mm -hmm. Bemidji State found itself with a lot of time and space in their offensive zone on Friday night. Well, and made uh, made an awful lot of nice plays, as, uh, as is usually the case. Uh, when good players have time and space, uh, they make pretty good plays. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we certainly gave up a lot of time and space defensively. Bemidji State would score full four goals in the span of less than nine minutes in the second period. Uh, people were stunned here, Dave, as this was taking place. Well, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't have the pushback. And I look back on it, I missed an opportunity after the second goal against. Uh, you know, if I can go back and do it again, I would take a timeout at that point in yeah. time, not just because of the goal that was scored to make it 2 nothing, but what had led up to it over the previous five minutes. Yeah. I elected not to, uh, and it certainly came back to sting us because we did not push back in the way uh, that we needed to uh, after it was 2 and even 3 nothing. You pulled Zane McIntyre after it was 4 nothing. Is this one of those cases where the guys in front of your goaltender are not playing well, it's your number one goaltender, so why have them in there at that stage? No, absolutely not. No? It's not that simple. Um, I didn't like the play of our, our team top to bottom. And that includes our goaltending. Yes, we we had left Zane hanging out to dry. We gave up an awful lot of good opportunities. But again, I'll restate it. His goal is to uh, to get us through those rough patches and give us an opportunity to get things going. So at that point in time, obviously nothing was going uh, the way we wanted it to. It was time to make a change uh, and try to push forward. In the final 20 minutes, did you see some signs of a higher compete level and somewhat of a pushback? Well, there wasn't a ton of pushback. It's really hard, uh, you know, when you're uh, as we were, we were not mentally ready as a team to play this game. Uh, it's really hard to uh, to recover. We did, uh, we showed signs, uh, of, you know, and certainly went out and played with with, uh, with pride. Um, you know, we've been stung pretty good in our building for two periods. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went out and we played a, a pretty good third period, even though by that point in time the game was out of reach. Uh, we played a, you know, we played a better 20 minutes. Dave, how about your top six forwards uh, in this game, generating just two shots on goal combined? Well, got to be a, an awful lot better. It has nothing to do with even just shots on goal. It's puck possession. It's defensive play. Uh, it's how you go out and generate offense. So, uh, but I'm not going to pick out the top six forwards. I mean, we were all from top to bottom, and again, I'm going to put me at the top of that list. We were subpar on Friday night. All right, five won the final in the regular season home opener. Uh, here's some comments from your players following the game. Not what we expected out there. That's. Uh... Completely unacceptable. Obviously, not uh, not what we wanted from ourselves, right, uh, right from the leaders down. And uh, you know, like I said, just just unacceptable, and uh, that, that can't happen, especially first game of the year. Well, we got outworked in every aspect of the game, outwilled, outcompeted. Um, like uh, coach just said, it was embarrassing, really. And uh, like we want to learn from it. Um, but to put that behind us at the same time. I think uh, we gave up way too many odd man rushes, just from making it easy for them to punch it behind our, our guys and, and attack against us. We got out-competed every period, every shift, and I think that's, that's unacceptable, especially for our team. Dave, we just heard your players. They used the word embarrassing on Friday night. Uh, certainly a time for reflection as you made your way to Bemidji on Saturday and kind of reset the focus for a key game on Saturday night. Absolutely. I mean, I think the, the number one word that we always uh, use is accountability. Uh, we're all accountable for our performances. Friday night was not very good, but the last thing that uh, that we want are uh, guys that are afraid to go out and play on Saturday. We were looking for a confident team, mm -hmm. uh, a team that showed good leadership, uh, and a team that was mentally strong enough to put Friday night behind itself and go out and play uh, an excellent road game on Saturday night. Which your team did, and we'll take a look at Saturday night's highlights as North Dakota bounces back with a 2-1 win. That's coming up next here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtell. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. 
The home and home series wrapping up Saturday night in Bemidji at the Sanford Center. Dave, let's take a look at Saturday night's highlights here. And you established a much different tone in the first period. 14 pretty good scoring chances in the first period. Special teams would play a big role in this game as well. Absolutely. We were uh, we came out. We were ready to play. As I said, going into uh, you know going into this game, we wanted to be a confident, uh, hard to play against road team, and that's exactly what we felt that we were. Uh, we got off to a good start uh, with some good power play chances and uh, got off to a great start by scoring the first goal of the game. Yeah, 14 uh, good chances in the first period, including a couple on the power play. This was scoreless until just under six to go in the first period. You're going to take advantage here of a Bemidji turnover at the red line and uh, Connor or Colton St. Clair rather who was in the lineup on this night uh, begins a play that will end up in a goal by himself. Well we talked about a commitment to playing without the puck. We played fast in the neutral zone. We were within our structure when we played fast. We pressured the puck, turned, uh, turned the puck over uh, and you see Colton there finishing off the rebound play after the two on one that was created by very good play fast play without the puck. St. Clair, one of a number of guys who were inserted into the lineup on Saturday. You got pretty good play out of most of those guys that were making their first appearance of the season. Yeah, usually performances uh, like we had on Friday night end up creating opportunities for, for some that aren't in the lineup. And um, you know, we went and uh, we made about as many changes as we could to our lineup, mm -hmm. uh, making a statement that Friday was not uh, an acceptable performance for us. Um, the guys that went in, went in and uh, each and every one of them provided something positive in the win. You had to kill off eight minutes of Bemidji State power play in the second period. Your penalty kill was really good. You you kept uh, Bemidji State more outside in this evening. We did. Zane had some uh, some shots that he had to contend with from the outside B type of chances and we'll you know we'll expect uh, either our defensemen to block those or Zane to make those saves. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a night where it was tough to know what was going to be a penalty and what wasn't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I take the onus on ourselves with two or three stick penalties where we had slashes to the hands, uh, hooks to the hands. Those are things that we have to make sure we learn from and do a better job of going forward and not take those penalties. How about the way you muscled your way to winning pucks on Saturday night? Well, that's our game. I mean, and that's, that's the game of hockey. Yeah, you have to be willing to compete in those difficult areas compete in the trenches uh, and, uh, and that was a major turnaround for us and uh, you know not something special that's yeah. just something that we do and something that we're good at. Johnny Simonson making his collegiate debut pretty good play won 8 to 12 face offs what do you think his effort overall? I thought overall it was an excellent effort uh, he, he went in and played a real good hockey game for us that's his first college hockey game um, you know he sat out uh, the exhibition game plus mm -hmm. the season opener but he's been practicing well uh, and uh, he did a good job in, in the lineup for us, and he'll be back in this weekend. Another penalty kill here in the second period, and Gage Osmus, who I thought had an outstanding weekend, particularly strong night on Saturday night, makes a couple of good plays here on this penalty kill. One of them coming up right here a little bit later to help clear the puck, and it's going to lead to the goal that makes it 2-0, his shorthanded goal. I thought Gage was a beast for us on, uh, on Saturday night. I thought Friday night he was one of our guys that competed at a high level. I thought he was better even on Saturday. Uh, he was an absolute force for us on the penalty kill, down low, uh, and then late in the game as we closed out a one-goal game. He was outstanding. Yeah, we'll see that key play late here coming up. So the general, Stefan Patton, comes out of the penalty box, scores the shorty to make it 2-0. You know, when you're killing a lot of penalties, you need good goaltending. But again, the play in front of Zane McIntyre was strong on Saturday. Well, you're seeing five green jerseys in that critical area. We're competing, we're battling, we're willing to block shots. We're doing all the little things that, that are necessary to beat a good hockey team. And mm -hmm. make no, no, no bones about it, Bemidji is a good hockey team. Yeah, Johnny Simonson feeding Bryn Chiswick for an opportunity there. And then in the final 30 seconds, still a one-goal game here. Bemidji State has the extra attacker. And you talk about a key play, wrapping up a strong night by Gage Osmus, and here it is. Yeah, just a great push along the wall, punching the puck up the wall. Uh, again, that's just, you know, will and making a good play. And there's no icing call there. It's just a good chip out, uh, outstanding play from top to bottom. Uh, you know, that's an accountable player that we can uh, we can count on in that situation. Yeah. Special teams are real key as you get a key non-conference win to wrap up the home and home series. 2-1 the final. Let's uh, listen to some of your players following the win. This was a huge game uh, just to show how hard it is to win any any hockey game, especially on a Saturday night is, you know, in a team's home building. Um, I think tonight was a great, great starting point for our team. You know, I think we, obviously we got a little away from ourselves last night, but tonight, 
I think we start to realize, you know, what it's going to take. Coach talked a lot about having faith in our systems and each other, so I think that uh, was a huge part of our game, just kind of trusting everyone, making the simple plays, and uh, just being hard to play against, too. We played intense, and that's what we needed to do, especially on the penalty kill. You're down a man, you just have to outwill the power play, and, and I think uh, that was a success for us tonight. Dave, you mentioned the words plays of will. There were a lot of will plays on Saturday night, weren't there? Well, within, within the game, you know, you have to have skill. And without skill, you don't win hockey games. But, you know, that number one skill a lot of times can be, uh, can be work ethic. Uh, it can be that utter will to go out and make a play. And that's, you know, that, that passionate play is a big part of the game. And, um, you know, we got a little bit ahead of ourselves on Friday night, and we forgot that a little bit. Uh, we regained our composure uh, and our team play on Saturday night. A lot of good things you can carry positively out of Saturday night's game. Well, there are, and that's one of the challenges I think that we'll put to ourselves as uh, as a team coming out of a good win on Saturday night. How do we carry that forward? I guess we answer that question over the next seven-day period. We'll have that answer late Saturday night after our second game in Colorado Springs. All right, here we go. Conference play, week two of the regular season. You're diving into the National Collegiate Hockey Conference. We'll look ahead to the conference opening series against Colorado College next. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingalls Stad Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, and in Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall. Dave, a couple things out of the weekend series against Bemidji State. Gage Osmus, he can give you a physical presence at the blue line, and uh, he certainly has given us a preview of that. If he plays like that, do you figure he can be a regular contributor at the blue line? Well, I think he already has become a regular contributor for us uh, as we go into the early part of the season. We've seen a great level of consistency from Gage as we've started our, gone through our preseason and now through our first weekend. Uh, he's uh, continuing to establish himself on our blue line. Johnny Simonson, Colton St. Clair, Trevor Olson all got into the lineup. Tucker Pullman on Saturday night. They all played well. That creates quite a competitive atmosphere here this week, does it not? Well, it does, and that's what, uh, that's what we've wanted to have uh, within our roster. I think for those guys, it's always a nice benefit to be able to play that first game on the road. You know, I thought uh, uh, in particular Tucker uh, and uh, Johnny, uh, as well as Trevor Olson, really settled into their game, their role, and did a great job on the road for us on Saturday. Now they have to carry that into this week of practice. All right, Colorado College, first up to begin conference play. Mike Havland, a uh, very strong professional uh, background. He wants to bring a pro type of program to Colorado College. Well, obviously a new coach coming in, uh, there's going to be a renewed mentality and uh, probably a little bit uh, of a different look to that team. I'm sure they'll be extremely uh, competitive, uh, knowing a lot of players on their roster and knowing uh, Mike Havlin. Uh, we'll, you know, we got our work cut out for us going in there, uh, but it's also a great challenge for our team. We need that challenge. Uh, we need to be on the edge, uh, and it's a great way to start conference play. Well, Dave, the theme this year in Colorado Springs is trying to score the puck more. Last year, Colorado College lost 17 one-goal games. Here's Jacob Slavin and the coach on trying to put the puck in the net more. I think offense is definitely going to be something that we need to improve on this year and just scoring overall. But I also, I think with our goaltending this year, I think it's going to be I think it's goaltending is going to help us out this year too. So it doesn't matter if we have an off game. I think our goalie might be able to save a few games. But I think the offense is a key thing is we need to score goals. We're going to try to change a little bit of the mindset of going to the net a little harder and staying around the net. And, you know, a lot of goals are scored within that, you know, 10 foot, 10, 12 foot radius. So, uh, you know, we got to get that mindset. So those are a couple things that really jump out at me. Dave, uh, traditionally here, you've uh, been going to Colorado, whether it's Denver or CC on Wednesday, get acclimated to the elevation. You found them some success with that, right? Well, we'll go late Wednesday night. Uh, it doesn't take anything away from our academics. It gives us a full work day uh, out in Colorado Springs and gets us out there about 12 hours earlier. So we'll continue with that schedule. All right, Dave, good luck this weekend at Colorado College, and we will recap it next week here on the show. We're back with more here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hextall.
North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingalls Stad Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. UND bound west for Colorado Springs in the NCHC regular season opener against Colorado College this weekend. The Tigers come into the series 2-0 after sweeping Alabama Huntsville last weekend to open the series. Colorado College not getting a lot of pub early in this season. In fact, the Tigers were the preseason pick to finish eighth or last in the National Collegiate Hockey Conference. We'll be in Colorado Springs and recap the series next week here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall. Beyond the Games, Midco Sports Network brings you the stories of athletes and coaches. Tuesday nights starting at 7, watch UND Sports Extra. And at 7.30, it's North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall. And at 8, join us for Kyle Corner from the University of South Dakota in Vermilion. And at 8.30, we'll take you around the region for unique sports stories on Midco Sports Magazine. Tuesday night's original shows on Midco Sports Network. This is how we do sports.